Hey, welcome back to another episode of Appian's Tip of the Week. This is your host, Dylan Friedhoff, coming to you with another riveting episode. For this episode, I want to talk about filtering data. So I have on the screen here a very typical situation of having a UI form that has data being passed into it. We have no control over this data, so we can't use the database to filter it. However, we want to have functionality such as being able to drop down and choose a department and also be able to start typing a filter, like part of a name, the beginning of a name, and be able for it to list out the things that filter for those conditions. When I first approached this, I went down some traditional ways of filtering data, and it kind of took me down a rabbit hole of different ways of doing filtering. And I just want to share with everybody the solution that I came up with that I feel solves most of the filtering needs. So let's start looking into it. So let's first look at the structure that we will need in order to filter data. First of all, we need the data itself. And here I'm just passing in as a parameter the, a record type, but it doesn't have to be a record type. It can be a list of map or a dictionary or a CDT. Then we need to know what column we want to filter on and finally what value we're looking for. So a very traditional function that we use to do this would be the where contains. This function will return an index from a list where a condition is met. And what's really nice about the where contains is we can pivot the data, so pivot the department using uh, the index function on the column that we put in. Now this will not work for a record type because you have to use field level description. But by casting the data to be a map list, we get around that and we can actually pass in the literal text of what column we want to get at. This will return back one array of text of all of the, in this case, departments. Then we can use where contains to search that list, finding our key, and then that we can, uh, that will return back a, a list of indexes of where that's found and we can use index again to pull out just those individual fields. In this case, there are 27 items where the department equals IT. So one of the really huge advantages of doing it this way is we can have multiple values. So if I want to pass in a multiple value, I can pass in IT and marketing, and now instead of 27 items, I have 63 items. So this will work really well for the use case where we want to select different items. But where it really fell down was when I wanted to start typing look ahead. So if I want to type D and have that filter where the last name starts with D, this doesn't work so well. So if we do last name, last name with D, we get a result set of nobody left. This is conceptually a light. Where contains is incapable of doing a light function. So that got me looking at an entirely different set of Appian functions to try to do this. So Appian has a like function, and one of the really nice benefits of this like function is that it works with lists. So if we take and say we're trying to find first names that start with S, we can use a wildcard passing that value in, and now when we test it, we can see it gives us back a list of where it starts with S and where it doesn't. So that can be used in combination with the where and the index so that we get back just the rows that we're interested in. So in this case, Case, first name starting with S, Susanetta, you can see that everybody that's returned fits that condition. So let's see how this works with multiple conditions for, let's say if we want department. So this brings out a problem with the like function. Even though you can compare your search string with multiple items to search through, what you cannot do is pass in multiple search strings to go against the strings that you're searching against. And that's what this error is saying, that you have to have a search string for every one of the items you're looking for. Without manipulating a lot of low code here, neither of these approaches seems to be the magic bullet that we're looking for. So let's uh, go down another route. So Appian includes a method called filter. This gives us hope that we can use this to filter out the rows we're interested in. In this particular example, we are pivoting for the department. So we're getting an array of the departments. We're sending in the contains because we want to know if uh, that contains 
uh, the field we're looking for. And when we execute this, it does a great job of giving us the 27 rows of data that has IT in it. Of course, you can see the problem is we're losing the original format of the data in the results set. Having to pass in a, an out-of-the-box function like contains, we will always fail because we won't have the original set of data. Unlike before where we got an index and we could index into the original set. So this one will not work either. However, what if we were to create our own rule as opposed to try to use a rule out of the box that then will return the appropriate information for filter? So let's start looking at what that function would look like. Because this function is going to be the predicate to the filter, its only job is to look at one row of data, return true to keep it, return false to be filtered out. So similar to what we've done in the previous functions, we're indexing our row of data, pivoted on the key, and if we look at just this one row, we can see it returns back marketing. So the department is marketing, so that is correct. We are finding that we have that. So because we want to be able to have like functionality, we want to find words that start with certain character sets, we're going back to the like function. And one nice aspect here is because we're working with one row of data, we're not going to run into the problem of having multiples. And what I mean by this is when we test this, it's actually testing the values that we passed in. So it's saying that the true for marketing, but it's false for IT, which is correct. Now this is close to what we want. We want to return true if we want to keep this row of data. And if either of these are true, we want to keep it. So the last step in this is to evaluate, find if any item is true, and that is the OR function. And you may say, wait, OR, we're not comparing two disparate values. If you use OR with a list, it will OR items, all items in lists. So there's a true and false here. If we OR that, it comes back as a true. And if we get rid of this so it doesn't match, so misspell marketing, it's gonna come back as false because it doesn't match either of these items. Even though marketing matches, it is still returned false because of case sensitivity. If we change this back to capital M, it is true. So our like function does not give us any ability for case sensitivity. To remedy this, I'm just going to lower everything. So it's true with a capital M, also true with a small m. So I think this is the function that we want. Now we need to go back to our original function to call it. So our first parameter filter is going to be the predicate that we just made, which was the test column function. The second one is going to be the data that the filter function is going to filter on, which is RI data. And since we pivot it to a map inside of the test column, we don't need to do anything here. Then filter allows you to pass context. These are the subsequent parameters that go into the predicate function. The next parameter of test column is going to be the key, and the last column is going to be value. So now if we test this for IT, we'll see the 27 rows that correspond. If we want to get a little fancier, let's test our multiple items. And we can get 63 items. Let's go back to first name. Any first name starting with S? There you have it. So using this select where, we can go back into our UI and wire in the method that we just created. So right now, if we select these drop downs or add anything, it doesn't do anything because we haven't attached the data to our filter method. So let's start by calling our select where, passing it the original data, filtering on department where it's from the department filter. And now you can see we have 27 ITs, that's correct and marketing finance gives us all 76 rows of data now we can't pass both filters the last name and department at the same time but we can what we can do is daisy chain them and we can daisy chain them by taking the result of the first filter and feeding that into the second filter so we're missing one last part of this our last name is null and null does not match any last names we could force somebody to have to type a filter in like if they typed in D star, that would result in all last names starting with D. I don't want to force them to know how to use the asterisk, so I'm just going to append the asterisk to whatever's in the last name to be sent onto the filter. Now if I type D, I, it will filter down for what I'm looking for. There's only one thing I don't like about this, and that's if 
My filter doesn't have anything to start with. It doesn't match anything and it returns nothing back. So I'm adding one last if condition to my select where, looking at the value passed in. If that is null or empty, then I'm just returning back the data set in its entirety. Else I go into the filter process. So taking these changes, now that nothing is selected, I get all 100 rows of data returned to me. So if I know Mick is in marketing, start typing his last name, all done. So I know this has gotten a little long, but I just wanted to take you down every step of what was typically done and the problems with it and how elegant the solution could be. So the final solution having 10 lines in the main function and then another 11 lines in the subsequent function to do filtering on any column, uh, wildcard, light position, or a multi-selection step. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.